anything about God. You know anything about what he's done for you. Sometimes you've just got to chase after him. You've got to praise your way through. You've got to give God all of the glory and the honor. As my aunt says, you got to praise him while you wait. So that way he knows that you know. That he knows that you know. That he reigns all the way through. Amen. If you would look with me at the call to worship. And if you are in the sanctuary, if you can rise. I will be the leader. And you will be the people. We are called to bring the world a new understanding of God, that God so loves the world. We are called to bring a new hope in God, that God gives us new life, abundant life, eternal life. We are the light of the world. We are called to follow the commandments and statutes of God and his law. The law of God is the love of God first. Jesus is light, and in him there is no darkness. Together, let us love one another with the love of God. And let us worship together in our love of God to obey and follow Jesus. We are compelled to demonstrate God's love everywhere our feet tread and to everyone we come in contact with. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you, Father God, that you have found your way yet again to Solid Rock Missionary Baptist Church. Father God, we pray that the praise and the worship that we give to you today, Lord God, is pleasing. Someone, Father God, who knows you, Father, but has been away for a while, Father God, we ask that they again chase after you today, Father God. And if there's anyone who is searching for some place to come and worship, Father God, we ask that you would allow them to become a part of the Solid Rock Missionary Baptist Church family, Lord God. We love you. We thank you. We welcome you today, and we look forward to seeing the blessings that you will bestow upon us right now in this very moment. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. We will now have the welcome by Sister Monica Johnson, followed by announcements of church news by Trustee Bryce Thomas, followed by pastoral remarks by Reverend Thomas A. Keys in that order. support this effort by simply contributing to the SRNBC building fund. Contributions to the building fund can also be made by visiting the SRNBC website and clicking on the donation button. In addition, please empty the weight from your pockets and purses by bringing your coins and depositing it into our change for church container and watch the temperature rise on our thermometer. These funds along with any donations made in the give with your heart envelopes all goes to our building. Solid Rock 2020. 
all in from vision to fruition. Precepts for Living 2020-2021 at Dog Sunday School Books are available. Contact Trustee Elizabeth Summers to order. The price for the regular print is $19.95 and the large print is $22.95. If you are paying by check, please put in the memo section of the check Sunday School Book. The COVID-19 pandemic has likely brought many changes to how we live our lives and uncertainty altered daily routines, financial pressures, and social isolation. We may worry about getting sick, how long the pandemic will last, and what the future will bring. Information overload, rumors, and misinformation can make our lives feel out of control. We may also experience stress, anxiety, fear, sadness, and loneliness. Mental health disorders, including anxiety and depression, can worsen. SRMBC Event Ministry will be presenting a visual workshop via Zoom on Tuesday, August 4th at 6.30 p.m. We hope that you will join us and what we feel will add some relief to those who are struggling due to this pandemic. We ask that you share with this information. We ask that you share this information with others. It is our goal to reach Harrisburg and the surrounding areas. Amen. Should you have any questions that you would like the facilitators to answer, please pre-send them to trustee Elizabeth Summers at Elizabeth period solid rock at gmail period dot com. Please keep in prayer, Sister Duane Scott, who is here today. <laughs> Grace Williams, who is in Church of God, home in Carlisle, PA, room 229. Brother Willie Harris, who is in Spring Creek Nursing and Rehabilitation Center, room 111. Brother Al Nelson, who is at home. Sister Beverly Edwards, who is at home. Brother Paul Carey, who is at home. And Sister Patricia Patterson Lee, who is at home. To notify the church of any illness, hospitalization, or death in your family, Please email Assistant Church Secretary at Sister Jamie C. Foster, excuse me, at Jamie C. Foster at gmail.com. These have been your announcements. Please have a blessed day. Good morning, Solid Rock family. Can we stand to our feet and give God praise?
according to the health professionals, I'm not supposed to have any capabilities. So, mm -hmm. that ain't what God said. All right. I can walk today. Praise the Lord.
get together, right? Amen. 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 Pray for the men. I want to say a quick congratulations to uh, our brother Marquis Posey, who made uh, Petty Officer Second Class. John Tate, uh, he is he has been recognized as one of the most 100 influential people in women's college basketball. He is the son of our own Elizabeth So praise God for him. Look at that, brother. I'm so glad he's on our side. Amen. Praise God. And, and, and now finally, uh, me and Kirsten were, were out delivering books for the school district. And look who we ran into. Look who we ran into. We ran into our brother Randy. Amen. And in the COVID-19, uh, they did not allow him to visit with us, but it was so good of God to allow us to meet him on the street and just have fellowship. He really missed the church, amen. And he misses y'all. And more than anything, he misses the pastors. So let's, <laughs> let's, let's praise God for him. Come on, give God a hand. Up here. Come on.
said unto them, Suffer the little children to come unto me, and forbid them not, for such is the kingdom of heaven. Verily I say unto you, Whosoever shall not receive the kingdom of God and he shall not enter therein. And he took them up in his arms, put his hands upon them, and blessed them. Thus ends the reading of this dedication. Thank you, have the child's mother and grand and grandmother and godmother turn and face me. And I want to make a chart to see Christine with you and many me. In presenting yourself and your child to the Lord, you enter into a solemn relationship with our God and keeps the covenant to a thousand generations. This is very serious. Which God will hold you personally responsible. I charge you. In the presence of God and this congregation to love your child as much as your own life. Never allow her to have any doubts about your love. Teach this child to love and obey God. Let her see in you the evidence of Jesus working in your life. Make spiritual things the topic of conversation, the focus of family life, and the basis for personal development. Teach uh, this wonderful girl to love and obey you. Obedience to the parents is right. When Rayla honors you, God promises her long life. The nursery of baby Rayla is your to the godparents and to the grandparents. The nurturing godparents and grandparents. The nurturing of baby Rayla is also your every facet of her life. And the table is a banquet of green flowers. Amen. The flower one represents the grace of God. And another, another flower represents the love of God. And this other flower represents the peace of God. Continue to watch over Ray. Do you, Christina, promise to love and cherish little Rayla and lead her at the proper time to a proper relationship and knowledge of Jesus Christ? If you promise to do so, respond with thy will. Amen. Say aloud, sir, right here. I will. Pray for the Lord, amen. Turn the faith to congregation. Congregation, will you please stand? As a local congregation, we spend, we bear a responsibility to this family. Will you pray for this family? Encourage them as they grow together to do all in their power to assist in raising little Rayla and coming to know Jesus Christ as personal Savior. If you will make that uh, declaration, if you will take up this charge, respond together by saying, uh, we, will. we will. We will. Oh, come on, one more time. We will. We will. Amen. You may be seated. Amen. Amen. Turn and face me and let that baby see her past. <laughs> Bless you and praise you for a wonderful, beautiful life that you've given. And now, Father, we dedicate little Rayla Simone Chambers to you in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Turn and face and let them see this baby. Amen. Come on, stand to
reading of the Holy Scripture by Sister Allison Hart. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. I'll be reading 1 John 5, verses 1 through 5, the Amplified Version. Everyone who believes with a deep abiding trust in, in the fact that Jesus is Christ, the Messiah, the Anointed, is born of God. This is, this is reborn from above, spiritually transformed, renewed, and set apart for his purpose. And everyone who, who loves the Father, who loves A, the child born of him, by this we know without any doubt that we love the children of God. Expressing that love when we love God and obey his commandments. For the true love of God is this, that we habitually keep his commandments and remain focused on his precepts. His, and his commandments and his, I'm sorry, and, let me start with this, sorry. For, for the love, for the true love of God is this, that we habitually keep his commandments and remain focused on his precepts. And his commandments and his precepts are not difficult to obey. Amen. For everyone born of God is victorious and overcome, overcomers will grow. And this is the victory that has conquered, conquered and overcame the world. And our continually persistent faith in Jesus, the Son of God, who is the one who is victorious and overcomes the world. It is the one who believes and recognizes the fact that Jesus is the Son of God. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 The wonderful part about prayer is, is that we don't have to be at an altar to do it. Amen. We don't have to be in a church to do it. You can be in your car, you can be at your desk at work, you can be in your secret hiding place. You can be in the shower. You can be coming here to church. You can be in your bed. For God hears our prayers and we know that we serve a God who also answers prayers as we've seen today here at church. And if you're waiting for an answer, praise him while you wait. If he's already given you an answer, praise him for that answer. Amen. Whether it's yes, no, not right now, a little bit later, down the road, or outright no, because we serve a God who knows what's best, even in the throes of a pandemic. This is not caught God by surprise, even though it's a surprise for us. Even though it's burdensome for us, it's not burdensome for him. If he can die, raise, and give salvation to everyone who's ever lived, is living, and who shall ever live, then whatever you're asking God for today, he can do. So let us look to the Lord. Heavenly Father, Father God, we love you so much today. We don't love you because you've done something, Father. We love you because you're God. We love you because you love us unconditionally. You love us like only a father could. You love us, Lord God, when we're bad. You love us when we're good. You love the most unlovable parts of us, Father God. And for that, we say thank you. Father God, we thank you for the end of yet another month, Father God. 2020 has been a year, Father God, but it was already in your plan. Whatever it is that you want us to hear, Father God, we are listening. We are here. We want to be obedient to you, Father God. We desire to be obedient to you, Father God. So if all that we've seen in 2020 is for us to be just a little bit closer to you than we were in 2019, then we'll take it. Father God, if this is what you need to do and for people to learn about you and for us to be bold in our faith for you, Father God, we'll take it, Father God. We thank you, Lord God, that you are a God who continues to bless, Father God. We thank you, Father God, that your heart, Lord God, has not yet hardened for your people, Father God. We thank you, Lord God, for new chances, new days, new opportunities, Lord God, to get this thing called life right again. We thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, that he was the ultimate example on how we should live, Father God, on how we should behave, on how we should act for those who we love, those who we like, and those who, quite frankly, we're not too fond of. Father God, we love you, Lord God, because you are God who continues to bestow grace and mercy on your people, Father God. 
We ask, Lord God, that now at this time, Father God, that you would bless those, Lord, who are mourning the loss of a loved one. For those, Lord God, who may be mourning the loss of a relationship, mourning the loss of a job, mourning the loss of a home, mourning the loss of a car, Father God, none of these things take you by surprise. So, Father God, we ask that you would do what only you can do, Father, which is to bring comfort, to bring peace, and to can you continue to bless solid rock, Lord God. You know that we seek to desire to build a building, Lord God, where we can worship and edify you, Father God. We desire to give you a sanctuary like David desired to do, Lord God, and that you bless Solomon to be able to build. So, Father God, we ask that you would bless Solid Rock, Lord God, that you would touch the bank, Father God, that they might see that we are seeking to be a church, Lord God, who just loves you who just wants to be, Lord God, closer to you. So, Father God, we seek a yes and an amen, Father God. We pray, Lord God, for every construction person who will take part in the job, every HVAC person, Lord God, every plumber, every electrician, Father God, every person who will contribute to the building of that building at 2400 Locust Lane. Father God, we know, Lord God, that you would not let us get this far to only tell us no, Father God. So we're praising you while we wait to see you move, Father God. Lord God, we know that you can do this, Lord God, because you've already done it so many times for us before, Father. So we thank you, Lord God, in advance for what that building will be, Lord God. And when we get to walk in that first Sunday, Lord God, it will be nothing but glorious praises and worship on high to you, Lord God because you will be so deserving and worthy of that honor and praise. Father God, we ask that you will continue to bless our pastor, Lord God, and every member of clergy here and leadership at Solid Rock, Father God. Now is a daunting time to be a leader, Father God. So I ask that we would cling together, Lord God, as we seek to do your will and your work, Lord God, that we would cling and look to you, Father God, that our agenda, that our will is your will, Father God. Continue to bring this church closer, Father God, whether online and face-to-face, -face, that we might know, Lord God, that we care about each other and that we care for one another because you care for us, Father God. We send special prayers for parents and children, Lord God, as we begin to turn, return back to work and to school, Father God. Cover every single family in your blood, Father God. We pray, Father God, for those who are at high risk, Father God, that they may be COVID and coronavirus free, Father God. We pray that you would allow this place of worship, Lord God, to be one, Lord God, that's not affected or inflicted, Lord God, with virus, Father God, or illness or sickness, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, again today, Father God, because you're such a wonderful God. You're such a blessed God. You are such a mighty and powerful God, Lord God. We love you, Father God. We thank you for what you're going to do. We thank you for what you've already done, and we thank you for what you're doing, both what we can see and what we can. It is in your blessed name we pray. Amen. And we will now experience the ministry of music with the Solid Rock Young Adult Choir.
Censor Deja Warren, followed by Worship and Giving. Please follow the direction of the ushers at that time.
laughing and hanging with my girls, and now I'm going to learn how to overcome this stuff. <coughs> how many of you know that overcoming is not just for a season? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So while I was excited about the summer of the overcomer, the Holy Spirit had to teach me that overcoming isn't seasonal. Mm. But overcoming is for every season and situation mm. of life. Amen? So I ask you today, what are you up against? Mm, wow. What are you trying to overcome? Yeah. Facebook, what are you trying to overcome? Drugs, addiction, fornication, uh -oh. creeping, adultery, whatever it is, financial problems. Maybe you're trying to overcome the death and the loss of someone near and dear to you. We certainly know what that kind of grief and pain is about here at Summit Rock, don't we? So whatever you're trying to overcome, maybe you're just trying to overcome how we're going to go back to school this year, Sister Jamie. How, how are we going to overcome teaching nearly 7,000 children online? How are we going to overcome bringing nearly 1,000 employees back and everybody staying health, healthy, safe, and well? How do we overcome? Thinking because maybe the building committee is trying to wonder how will we overcome this huge financial challenge? But it's doable. It's doable. The R&B musical prophet, not sure what his name is, but maybe some of y'all can tell me. He said something like this. It's, it's like a jumble sometimes. Oh. It makes me wonder how I keep from going back. Grandmaster Flack. Grandmaster Flack. Thank you. Because I'm close to the edge. Because yeah. yeah. it's like a jungle sometimes. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Sometimes I got to wonder how I keep from going under. And for those of you bold enough and courageous to admit it today, you're trying to wonder the same thing. Mm -hmm. It's not just a song, right. but it's real life mm -hmm. from day to day. You're trying to wonder how to keep from going under. But with the word of God readily available to us, as believers, we don't have to wonder. We don't have to question. We don't have to try to figure it out. You know why? Because God has given us his word. Right. Amen? Right. In the book of 1 John, the disciple who Jesus loved wrote us a love letter. He wrote three love letters, as a matter of fact. If you turn in your Bible, you'll see the epistle of 1 John, 2 John, and he loved us so much he gave us a third one. Well, Amen? So when we turn to that word, we see that John is speaking to believers. So while this word, we always want to lead somebody to Christ here in our midst or even online, we want to lead you to Christ so that you can be an overcomer. The Apostle John is talking to believers in this text. I have any believers in the house? Amen. 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 Praise God, we have a house full Amen. of believers. So you know what? This message is for you. Yeah. It's driving straight up your alley. Yeah. It's right for you today. Amen? Amen? So I'm hoping that I can preach it like I feel it, like the Holy Spirit gave it to me. So, so why don't we enter into prayer? Join me, saints. Yeah. Heavenly Father, I stand before you today an empty and yielded vessel, asking you to fill me up with your anointing and with your power. Help me to share this word in the way that you've given it, that your people would be changed, equipped, and empowered to be successful and awesome overcomers. In the name of Christ Jesus, we do pray. Amen. 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 So in this particular pericope, John is speaking to believers. And in the, the, the major themes of this particular book is believing that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Well, That's foundational. If you want to be an overcomer in Christ, you must first believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Amen? Amen. Amen. And remember, According we're talking to believers today. So I expect to have a lot of amens, amen, amen, in the house. Second of all, the Apostle John is, is talking about loving God and fellowship with God and following God's commands. It's right in the text. I want you to go home and read a little bit more of it uh, in your spare time. And then thirdly, he's talking about how to ascertain or determine 
whether or not our relationship with God is genuine. Mm. This is for believers. He's asking us the question, is your relationship real? Or are you just putting on a sham? Mm. You putting on the risk? Amen. Are you for real? Amen. And then fourthly in this particular text, he is sharing with believers how to overcome the world. Yeah. How to overcome the world. And that's just in the, 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 the first love letter that he's sharing about this. So turn with me, if you will, if you have your word, maybe it's on your phone, maybe it's on your, your iPad, but turn to 1 John chapter 5, verses 1 through 5, amen? And it reads as thus from the New International Version. For everyone who believes the Father loves his child as well. This is how we know that we love the children of God. By loving God and carrying out his commands. That means doing what he says to do. Amen? Verse 3. In fact, this is love for God. To keep his commands and his commands are not burdensome. It's not hard, y'all. It's not hard. Verse 4, and this is where we're going to spend the duration of our time today in verses 4 and 5. For everyone born of God overcomes the world. Yeah. Everyone born of God yeah. overcomes the world. Amen. That ought to be good news for believers in the house Amen. today. Amen. Everyone born of God overcomes the world. This is the victory that has overcome the world, even our faith. So who is it that overcomes the world? And then John tells us very clearly, only the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. Amen. There's no mincing words. Either you believe that he is the Son of God, born of a virgin, come from heaven to earth, carried an old rugged cross for your sin, for your junk, and your drama, and your guilt, and your shame, and mine as well, went to the cross, crucified, and shamed before the entire world, but he did it for his love, Amen. for the joy set before him. So even you believe that he is truly the Son of God, the risen Savior, the one who's going to lead you to overcoming what you don't. And so I'm praying that in this house, as believers, we all believe that. Amen. And if you're wondering, there'll be time for you to do some personal reflection, amen? Because God is a good God. Amen. So people of God here, so we got to do, when you look at this particular text, if you don't know, you got to change your perspective. Because it doesn't mince words. Only the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God, that is the one who's going to overcome. So to him or to her who has ears, let them hear what thus saith the Lord. When we know who we are and whose we are, and that he died for us, that he rose for us, and that he resides in us. Oh, Isn't it an awesome wow, thing to know that Jesus wow. Christ takes up residence oh, in you? Yes. That's why yes. the verse says, greater is he in the world. Right. Amen? Amen? So when we know who we are and whose we are, that he rose for us, that he resides in us, oh. that truth all by itself, that's a game changer. Amen. I don't know about you, that's a game changer for me. Yeah. That does it. That seals the deal. The game changer. That anything that rises up against the Christ in me, right. the word of God says that he will raise up a stand yeah. against it. Amen. Anything that comes against you, my brother, God will raise up a standard against it. Amen. Because he's made you to be an overcomer. Again, we're talking to believers today. Amen. So when I think of overcoming, I think about the 60s. I'm a child of the 60s. Amen. Amen. It shows, and I hope I'm wearing it well. Uh, <laughs> but when I look back at the footage of Dr. King and, and so many of those who went before us to fight for freedom and justice, I, I think about a song that says, we shall 
overcome. We shall overcome. We shall overcome when But I declare the decree that's a song for today. Amen. <laughs> to all the people fighting the power of Black Lives Matter, that's a song for today. Amen. That we shall and we will overcome Amen. someday. Yeah. It might not be tomorrow. We might not see the policy change that we're looking for today or tomorrow, but it's coming. <laughs> it's coming. Dr. King believed it. Medgar Evers believed it, Amen. and so many others, white and black, Jew and Christian that marched along with them, they too believed that we shall overcome. And guess what? The things that they were fighting back then, we surely did overcome. Yes. Well. Not by flesh and blood. I believe it was the strong arm of God yes. that empowered men and women yes. to help us overcome the things that faced us at that time. The lack of voting rights and Jim Crow and, and segregation and oppression of every kind. It was God's mighty hand that helped his people overcome. Amen. Amen? Amen? So when I think of being an overcomer, it's so appropriate for me to remember on this day, mm -hmm. the late, great Congressman John Lewis. Amen. Just about a week ago, I was watching TV and it, it broke into a breaking What's going on? Who you know? The breaking news from the White House, from the CDC. Where is the breaking news coming from? And it was breaking news telling us that one of our greatest freedom rights, mm -hmm. Congressman John Lewis, had gone on to glory. For those of you who don't know, John Lewis was one of the big six leaders of the groups who organized the 1963 March on Washington. He fulfilled many key roles in the Civil Rights Movement and its collective actions to end legalized, legalized racial segregation in these United States of America. See, at one time it was legal to do that. But praise God for the sacrifice and the courage of these men and women. Because I'm, I'm asking myself, I don't know if I could have done that. Dogs and fire hoses and crosses being burned on your, your property and, and being shot at in peace. I know, I know. Police brutality to the nth degree. Mm -hmm. But I praise God today for the life of Congressman John Lewis. You see, in 1965, he led the Selma Montgomery marches across the Edmund Pettus Bridge in an incident that became known as Bloody Sunday. And we're having some bloody Sundays and days today as well, but I declare and decree by the word of God we're overcomers. So on that bloody Sunday, armed Alabama police attacked unarmed civilians who were demonstrating, including Congressman Lewis, Jose Williams, and Amelia Boynton. You don't hear about their names, but they too were overcomers. By the power of God and by his faith in God, and I believe by his perspective of who God was and what God was tasking him to do, the Honorable Congressman John Lewis will forever be known as one of the great drum majors for justice for all and a true overcomer. Amen? Amen? So as this week they're celebrating his life and his legacy, remember that that great man is indeed an overcomer. And now he's overcome in the most awesome yeah. eternal way. Yeah. Amen. Seated with God the Father, yeah. Jesus Christ the Son, and the Holy yeah. Spirit. Amen. Being rewarded for his works here on earth. Yeah. What a story, a testament of overcoming with purpose. So whether you are marching on the battlefield mm -hmm. of life, mm -hmm. whether we are marching in wars for freedom, whether we are marching in a movement for justice, our perspective matters. 
your perspective matters. You gotta know what you're doing and why you're doing it and for whom and for what. If you don't know, the cause will be lost. And so everybody that's involved in this movement, march with intentionality, protest with intentionality. Know what you are doing and what you are marching for because your perspective on the issues matter. Yeah. You see, when our perspective changes, it spiritually and tactically changes our mindset. And the reason I say tactically, because when you're in a battle, there are some tactical strategies that soldiers employ to overcome. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. I don't know about you, but the song says, we are soldiers in the army. Yeah. We have, we, we have to fight although we have to die. We have to hold up the bloodstained banner. We gotta hold it up and overcome until we die. So you see as believers when our mindset is right and our helmet of salvation is secure and tightly in place, then we can fight life's battles from a position of purpose and power and strategy for victory. See, because I don't know about you, but I'm not in a fight to lose. Amen. Amen. I'm not in this fight of life to lose. Because the word declares and decrees that I am more than an overcomer. Mm -hmm. The choir sings about it. I'm a conqueror. I'm victorious. I won't be stopped. I won't be blocked. See, I'm trying to relate to y'all right where you live. Because the things we sing and say, those are the kind of things that help us to walk out this testimony of being an overcomer. Amen. It's not just songs that uh, Jasmine and, and, and Renee play and sing and teach us. Those songs help to equip us as believers. Yeah. Amen? Amen. Amen? So when you come in here and they're singing those songs that minister to your soul, amen, join in with them. Amen. Because that is your testimony of overcoming. Amen? amen? That is your praise to an awesome God. Amen? Amen. 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 So remember, You're overcoming. Do it from a position of purpose, a position of power, and a strategy for victory. As I prepared for this message on being an overcomer, I started thinking about all the characteristics of what I thought was important to be an overcomer. Again, like I said, I thought was important. Because see, everyone who stands behind this sacred desk, you start off and you pray. And then you think you know what you want to talk about. Yeah. And when you pray some more, the Holy Spirit says, no, this is what I want you to say. Amen. So as I began preparing and I thought, well, well what are the characteristics of, of an overcomer? So I started doing some alliteration with the word P, perspective. Yeah, God, they need perspective. Uh-huh. And then I said, okay, God, they need they need to know how to persevere and stay up under a situation in a godly way. I said, God, they need to know about patience. Uh, and I said, God, yeah, they need to know about prayer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then I said, God, they also need to know about praise. And the Holy Spirit says, stop right where you are. So you, you, you get full of yourself and ahead of yourself. And I'm the one that's speaking this sermon. You're merely a tool in my hands to speak for the people here. So don't get it twisted. So as I humbled myself before the Lord and under his mighty hand, the Holy Spirit began to speak even more clearly and said, Kirsten, there's only one word that the people need to know today. Perspective. It's about their perspective. So the definition of perspective is the angle or direction in which a person looks at an object or a situation. It's your point of view. It's the ability to understand what is important and what isn't. It's keeping an accurate rating of what's important. So I ask you, what's your perspective? What's your perspective? When you consider the text that we read into your hearing, First John 5, uh, 4 and 5, about he who, only come, he who overcomes, it's the one who believes in Jesus Christ that he's the son of God. So what is your perspective? Do you have a right perspective today? Do you have a right relationship with the one who will cause you to be an overcomer today? If you don't know, you better check. Amen, because this is critical for us as believers. It, 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 may not, it might not seem to you that guess what? That's the oldest trick in the book by the enemy. To distract you, to discourage you, to disappoint you. And that gets you off base. Amen. 
So as believers today, we want to reassess where we are in Christ to make sure that we have the right perspective. Amen? Amen. And then we want to make sure we have the right perspective. So let's not get it twisted. Let's keep it in perspective as it relates to being an overcomer. In our text, we see that for everyone born of God overcomes the world. Get that in your spirit, believers. This is the victory that, that has overcome the world, even our faith. Who is it that overcomes the world? I like how John keeps asking the question. It's almost like he's asking a rhetorical question. Word. Only he who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. Not believing in Buddha. Harry Krishna worshipers. He who believes in Jesus Christ. So perspective is everything. Perspective determines how we see the issues of life. Our perspective indicates whether the glass is half empty or half full. Our perspective determines whether we see ourselves as victims of circumstance or victors over the situations that come our way. Are you a victim of circumstance? Or are you a victor? of the situations right. that come Amen. your way. Amen. Think about the movie Overcomer. Our pastor did a Bible study on that. It was an awesome Bible study. Uh, how many of you remember that movie? In that movie, the, the key actor, actress in that movie was a girl named Hannah. Hannah had some issues. Her mother got strung out on drugs and she died. Her father was the one that got her mother on drugs. and He was in the hospital battling his own issues, now later in life. The coach. Coach Harrison, he had issues too. The town was facing a, a tremendous challenge. The factory closed and everybody who worked there seemed like they were leaving and going to where the jobs were. Hannah's grandmother had issues. She had an unforgiving heart against Hannah's daddy, who she felt killed her daughter. So when I think about that movie and I think about Hannah, Hannah was a natural born runner. Hannah was a lot like her father. How many of you are like your father? Not so much your earthly father, but your heavenly father. I see you, Morgan. But Hannah had the ability to run. She had a natural gift that was also the gift of her father, who also ran track in cross country. And when we think about that movie and all that Hannah went through, it wasn't just the physical race that Hannah was trying to win. There was a, a war raging within Hannah that she needed to settle with God. The school principal played by Priscilla Shire, who's one of my favorite uh, ladies on the gospel scene today. She needed to know who she was in Christ, that indeed she could overcome everything that was facing her. But first, Hannah had to get her perspective straight. Well, I know. Hannah couldn't look at her daddy on practically his deathbed. She couldn't look to her grandmother with her unforgiving heart. She couldn't even look to Coach Harrison, who was a good uh, influence in her life. Hannah had to go to the Word of God well, and look at her life, how it matched up with the Word. And if you recall in that movie, there was a theater class where they had kids trying to be eloquent and, you know, express who they were and different. Hannah walked up in the class one day. Once she read the book for herself, at that moment, Hannah knew that she was indeed an overcomer. Everybody that was in the class was, they were blown away at the ability of this young girl to articulate clearly, definitively, who she was in Christ. Mm -hmm. And here's the thing, it was a Christian school. So why were the other kids in staff so blown away? Well, I assumed that they too were believers, they, they were at the school, but not everybody who's in the house well, is saved in the house, amen? Amen, amen. amen but Praise God for Hannah's testimony that she indeed knew that she was an overcomer. So not only did she go on to, to beat Gina Mims, that's right, that's the other girl in the race. Sophia and I watched that movie. So Gina Mims was the, the record holder. And uh, they hooked her up 
to a device in her ear where her father became useful. See, at some point, he had to recognize his purpose. He had to come to grips with his issues and sin in his life. And God blessed him to be able to pour into the life of his daughter that she became an overcomer on the track field, that is. He spoke into her ear. He would tell her, okay, Hannah, Gina Mims is in front of you. The girl who took second last year, she's in front of you. And there's another a runner in front of you. Amen? But as he continued to speak in her ear, he gave her instruction. He said, okay, daughter, there's a hill coming up. I want you to pump your arms real fast. And I want you to run with the strength in your legs. I know it hurts. I know your legs are burning, but I want you to keep running. And then I love it when he tell, tells her, Hannah, take the hill. And she took the hill. What is God telling you to take today? What is God telling you to take today? He wants you to overcome that issue in your life. And I don't want to say just issue singular, because for most of us as, as mere human beings, we have multiple issues. I'm not even trying to fake it. We have multiple issues. Don't try to dress them up and make, they make them look pretty. They're ugly. They're ridiculous. And Jesus Christ wants us to overcome them by his blood and by the word of our testimony. Amen? But our perspective has got to be right. See, even when we're going through, when we're pressed on every side, when we are perplexed, and when we can't physically see a way out, when we can't financially think of a hookup for a way out, it's our perspective working in collaboration with our faith that keeps us from becoming overwhelmed so that Christ will cause us to be overcomers. You see, every overcomer must have a right relationship with Christ and a right perspective of who Christ is. He's the Son of God. He's the Lamb of God. He is the Lion of Judah. He's the King of Kings. He's the Lord of Lords. He's the Prince of Peace. He's the greatest overcomer this world has ever known. And guess what? He's the greatest overcomer that we as believers will ever know. He is our example for overcoming. All we gotta do is look at the, the life of Jesus Christ. And that way we can sing that song. I know I can make it. I know I can say it. No matter what comes my way, my life is in the So whether it's here on earth or whether it's in eternity, I'm gonna make it come. You see, whether Satan thinks I lose here on earth, guess what? Because of Jesus Christ. Eternally, I'm an overcomer. Satan has no hold on me. Satan has no grip on you. You're victorious yeah. Yeah. in Jesus Christ. Yeah. Don't let the devil deceive you to death. God made you to be an overcomer, but some of us yeah. need to make a decision for Christ. Yeah. You got Because when you sit on the fence, life will beat you up and eat you up. Amen. But through Jesus Christ, Amen. we are overcomers. Amen. We're coming to a close. We're coming to a close, but stick with me. You see, if we profess to be Christians, yet we don't know him. Mm -hmm. I'm not talking about coming to this building on a, so yeah. on a Sunday yeah. mm -hmm. and thinking that's knowing him. Mm -hmm. right. If we profess to be Christians, yet don't know him mm -hmm. intimately for yourself, mm -hmm. regardless of what pastor preacher mm -hmm. teaches, you better get in that word for yourself mm -hmm. and validate what this man is giving to you. Yeah. So that you know without a shadow of a doubt that you are indeed yeah. a son of God, a daughter of God, yeah. that you're an overcomer for your know it for yourself. Yeah. It's one thing for pastor to tell us. Well. It's another thing for you to know it mm -hmm. and to walk it out yeah. with belief and conviction so that yeah. when the arrows of the enemy start coming your yeah. way, what does it say in the book of Ephesians? So that we can overcome the wiles of the devil. You got to know how to use your shield of faith. You got to know how to put that helmet on right. It can't be broken. Like sometimes our weaves. You know what I'm saying? You got to straighten. Come on now. You got to straighten that thing out. Ain't no shape on my neck. You got to straighten that thing out. Because it's the helmet of salvation that gives us perspective of the price that Jesus on the cross, yeah. that we are indeed his children, yeah. and he's made us to be overcomers. He's a real priesthood. Yeah. Nation, you're yeah. a queen. Yeah. And yeah. we got to know who we are. Yeah. Before our lives can matter, you better know who you 
are. Mm -hmm. That you matter first and foremost to him. It's okay to prove to the world that our lives matter, but he's the one that determined more than 2,000 years ago that our lives were worth saving, that we were worth keeping, that we were worth dying for. He is the one that tells us that, Kirsten, girl, your life matters. Go ahead with your bad stuff. Not because you're bad in yourself, but you're bad in me. You gotta know who you are. Young adults, please get it now. Don't wait till you 50, 60, 70 years old trying to figure out who you are in Christ. Mm -hmm. This is a word, church. Yeah. There's a reason that our pastor pours over the scriptures day and night, yeah. sitting at the computer, yeah. gets up at 2, 3, 4 in the morning. There's a reason that he pours himself out before God yeah. so that he can come and stand before you and impart the word yeah. of God. Yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. You see, when we know him, mm -hmm. you'll love him. Amen. And when you love him, you'll serve him. Nobody's got to ask yeah. to be part of a ministry. You'll want to serve. Yeah. You'll say, what must I do to serve in this yeah. church? Amen. Because as a, a born-again believer, God has gifted everybody Amen. with at least one spiritual gift. So my challenge to you today, how are you using your gifts in the church? Amen. How are you using your gifts to help Solid Rock grow? Amen. How are you using the testimony of your life and overcoming Amen. that you're sharing with someone else Amen. that you might lead them through these doors Amen. that they might know Christ? What are you doing? Amen. This is such a great salvation. God didn't give it to you for you to sit on it. Amen. He wants you to use it. But first and foremost, he wants you to know yeah. him. Yes, Love him. Yes, he Serve him. Yes. And there's something interesting that happens. I found in my own life that when I come to know him, when I come to love him, when I come to serve him, it helps me to trust him. Even when I can't see a way out. Even in situations where I created the drama for myself. It helps me to trust him that, that he will cause all things to work together for my good. And there ain't nothing that's making me do it. Holy Ghost, look up. Because you're his. It's his name on the line, not yours. So it's important to know him, regardless of the issues and challenges and storms that may or will come your way. You need to know him. See, the Apostle Paul, who wrote the majority of the New Testament, in Philippians 3 and 10, the Apostle Paul, his perspective was right on. His perspective was spot on. He breaks it down this way. The Apostle Paul says in Philippians 3 and 10, that I may know Christ oh, yes. in the power of his resurrection mm. and in the fellowship mm. of his suffering. The power of his resurrection. See, we all want to get happy about that, especially on Easter. Oh, yeah. Third day he arose. Yeah. Yeah. How many of us want to know him in the fellowship yeah. of his suffering? Amen. Amen. See, because when we go through, hmm. God builds amazing spiritual characteristics in us that we would not learn any other way. The apostle is not only in the power of his resurrection, that's the good stuff. Yeah. But the Apostle Paul knew how important it was to know him, have a desire to know the sufferings of Christ. See, the Apostle Paul was a straight-up sinner. But now he was a sold-out servant for Christ. Mm, all right, all right. He was saved and sanctified, consecrated, and set apart to do the work of ministry. And the Apostle Paul, having overcome all that he had been through, the thorn in his flesh, yeah. being shipwrecked, being flogged within an, an inch of his life, the persecution for his faith. The apostle Paul knew it wasn't enough to come on Sunday and hear God pat cake bread. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, little dab. Okay, little dab it then. Go back to my life. No, God wants some sold out saved believers. Hallelujah. We're to stand on the word of your testimony. Yeah. And speak to the amazing and awesome overcoming power of Jesus the Christ. Amen? Amen. The Apostle Paul had his perspective straight. He knew that it was imperative. He knew that it was necessary. He knew that it was essential for him to do the work that he was called to do. He couldn't have that. He had to know Christ and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings for himself. Amen? Amen? You see, just as Jesus Christ picked up his cross, we too, in the midst of life's challenges, mm -hmm. in the midst of death and disappointment, distraction and discouragement, we too must pick up our cross. Mm -hmm. We have to take up our cross daily, even when you're going through God will prepare you. He will strengthen you. He will equip you. So don't be slack in taking up your cross. Take it up and carry it proudly every day. Wear it as a badge of honor. Let's say no. What did you say last week, Pastor? It's time to get up. It's time to get dressed. And it's time to get going for the Lord. So you wear that badge proudly. Let the devil know each and every day, I'm up. And I'm in this fight to win. Amen. Amen. And really, Satan has already won. Because Jesus Christ won it for us. Amen. So really all you got to do is get up. Now you do have to put some effort into it. Just like Hannah had to pump her arm and use those leg muscles. We got to learn how to use our spiritual muscles. Whatever God has taught you in your spiritual walk up to this point, you got to. You gotta use what you know because guess what? What you don't know, he'll continue to reveal to you. He'll continue to teach you. He'll continue to show you. Amen? Amen. What a mighty God we serve. Angels yeah. bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. So ask your neighbor, what's your perspective? Who is Christ according to your understanding? Who is Jesus Christ, Sister Joanne, according to your understanding? Do you know him for yourself? In the difficult times of life, in the joyous times of life. Because see, it's not life isn't always a struggle. The word says weeping may endure for the night, but joy does come in the morning. And God gives us a sweet peace and a sweet joy that when we overcome and we've been through the battle, when we've been through the fire, there's a sweetness that comes that we can just say, praise you, Lord. Amen. Thank you for bringing me through. Thank you. I'm on the other side of the earth, and I'm looking back to see how overcoming. As I look back over my life, and I think things, I can truly say, I can surely say, I can declare and decree that I'm an overcomer yes. because of what Jesus Christ has done for me. Yes. So as you ask your neighbor that question, what's your perspective? Better yet, remember as you leave today, go home and do a spiritual assessment. Ask yourself, what's my perspective of Christ? Is he still Lord of your life? Is he still the reason for the season, as we say at Christmas? Do you still see him as an overcoming and an awesome God? Do you know that Jesus Christ, even now, will go through hell and high water? He'll do whatever he needs to do to help you to overcome whatever you're facing. Whether it's death, destruction, maybe your heart's broken today. Maybe you just don't know the beginning from the end. You made such a mess of your life. Jesus Christ has got the hookup. 
He's already got the answer. And it's found in his word. Because even in these perilous times, as people are marching and God is still working it out for your good. God is still moving on your behalf in every situation. Not just the hurtful ones, even the good ones. Even in that promotion. Sister Duane, I think you're up for a promotion, amen? God is even moving there. Even as he's restoring you from having two strokes, he's preparing you for that promotion that awaits you when you return to work. Isn't that an awesome God? Isn't that a loving God? Beloved, when we truly know that Christ and the power that he holds alone is what we need to overcome. We can hold fast to the word that declares. They overcame him by the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony. Amen. Amen. On any given day, I heard someone say, we're either in the midst of a storm, yeah. we're coming out of a storm, yeah. or we're getting ready to go into a storm. And it's just so good to know that even though those three places, in the midst of a storm, coming out of a storm, and getting ready to go into a storm, because see, that's the, the cycle of life. But we're overcoming. So the word that I'd like to leave you with today Two, actually, I want to ask you that rhetorical question found in our scriptures today. Who is it that overcomes the world? Is it you? Is it you? Is it you watching online? The word is clear that he who overcomes the world is the one who believes that Jesus Christ is the living son of God. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. God said it, and that settles it. Amen? Amen. In John 16 and 3, here's the confirmation that the Holy Ghost leaves us with today. I have told you in me, you may have peace. In this world, you will have trouble. But take heart. For I have overcome the world. The word of the Lord. For the people of the Lord. May it bless you as you continue on your journey to overcome everything that confronts your life. The blessing is to know that once we're done with this life here, we're going to be overcoming to a glorious yes. life. Amen. Amen. Every believer in the house, stand to your feet. Stand to your feet. Let's give God a hand clap of praise. Let's offer up a hallelujah. Let's praise his name. Thank you, Lord, for being the most awesome overcomer. And that with Christ, we too are overcomers as well. God bless you. Amen. Give God praise. Give God praise.
to come into your heart. Ask him to make you a new man, a new woman, a new a boy or girl. Ask Jesus Christ to come into your life. Amen. In addition to accepting Christ as your Savior, your new believer, new convert, that you've now professed and confessed Jesus Christ as Lord, as the Son of God, that's awesome. But maybe there's someone here who just needs to get reconnected. Maybe you're in a backslidden state. Maybe you've lost your mind up in here, up in here, and you have forgotten who Jesus Christ is in your life. Maybe you've forgotten that he's called you to such an awesome salvation. Maybe you've forgotten that he's called you to be an overcomer. Now's the time to come and ask him to restore you. He'll do it gently and loving, lovingly. He'll restore you and bring you back to that place of fellowship with God the Father, Jesus Christ, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Is that you today? You want to get reconnected with Christ? Maybe you want to join Solid Rock and make this your church home. Amen? This is a world week. So we invite you to come for membership. The Lord is impressing upon you your heart to join this fellowship of believers. Now's the time to come. And you know what? If you're online, just go to our website. There's information there where you can contact us and let us know that you've made one of three of these decisions. Either you want to get to know him as your Savior for the first time ever. It's an awesome thing to be reborn in Christ and have new life in him, knowing that you're an overcomer. Maybe you want to come. You have Christian experience. You want to come. You're backslidden. Now's the time to recommit. Or maybe you want to come by letter or Christian discipleship to this church to be a member here. Now is the time to do that as well. Whatever your decision, we pray God's grace and mercy and power over you as you overcome throughout this week. God bless you. Jesus Christ, Church and knowledge, holiness, and 
contribute cheerfully and regularly to the support of the ministry, the expenses of the needs of the poor, and the spread of the gospel through all nations. We are also engaged to maintain family and secret devotion to religiously educate our children, to seek the salvation of our kindred and acquaintances, to walk circumspectly in the world, to be just in our dealings, faithful in our engagements, and exemplary in our authority, to avoid all tattling, backbiting, and excessive anger, to abstain from the sale and use of intoxicating drink and beverage, and to be zealous in our efforts to advance the kingdom of our Savior. We further engage to watch over one another in brotherly love, to remember each other in prayer, to aid each other in sickness and distress, to cultivate Christian sympathy in feeling and courtesy in speech, to be slow to take offense, but always ready for reconciliation and mindful of the rules of our Savior to secure it without delay. We moreover engage that when we move from this place, we will, as soon as possible, unite with some other church where we can carry out the spirit of this covenant and the principles of God's word. And now unto him who brought again from the dead, our Lord Jesus, be power and glory forever. Amen. Amen. Now we're about ready to go down from this place but not from his presence. Shine upon you, be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up the countenance of his glory and bring you peace. But now unto him Hallelujah. who is able to keep us and make us overcomers, Hallelujah. who can keep us from falling, who is able to present us faultless and before his throne with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, the Lord and Savior, be majesty, glory, and dominion, and power. Both now and forevermore, let the church sing together with a loud voice. Let the church say, Amen. Amen. 